this idea, I think um, Constance was one of the first people part of it as well, and I sort of went, what do you reckon that we got together and just did some, you know, script readings once a month? Is that a thing that people would want to do? And as I sort of spoke to more women in the industry, a lot of people wanted to do that. So I was like, oh, okay, great. So it started in my lounge room, um, just doing these readings, and then it sort of went, um, people wanted to sort of said, can you mentor us to do a show? And then we did a show, and then just the momentum came and we just had more women that um, wanted to be part of it and uh, now we have we have 17 members in our gag core now <laughs> um, and yeah we are based in Melbourne but we do have a couple that are overseas at the moment um, you know pursuing their careers and they come back and we always like um, Rain Fuller who's in LA at the moment and and Sydney sorry too we have Sydney our major um, person Emma Caldwell who does all our marketing uh, she's in Sydney so she does a lot of stuff there too um, but yeah like Rainfall is back next in two weeks and we've got to move reading because she'll be in town so we still do our things in our lounge room uh, as well as these big amazing things but that's probably where it came about that it was just like I was like we need more opportunities for women how can we do it and so that's what we did. I guess, do you have a close number if somebody moves overseas and gets a huge role or something or whatever? We have a bit of a running joke at the moment where we get to say books are closed. Um, no, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Um, I think it's just um, a lot of the time, you know, if we need people for readings, they come along and what's sort of happened now is we have become a bit of an ensemble. So it's very much when I do ask people to come and read with us or be part of doing a project that I need to make sure it's going to work with everybody else that has already put in a lot of years and time. Um, and I, I think I saw Lisa in an audition and she came and auditioned for something else and then I sort of had a little file that went, yeah, put her in that part. That part. <laughs> and I think then I said, can you come for a reading and then the rest is history. A lot of people sort of came from other people. Like, I'd be like, we don't have enough numbers this month. Can you bring someone? And I think that's how some of the other people have come about. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's not really, it's an ever-growing number. Um, we don't, like, there's actually a couple of other members that are in the audience that aren't in this production. I think, I can't, is Emma and Claudia? Yes, yes, there's some other people here too. So we don't always, there's a lot of behind the scenes and some of the actors can only commit to doing move readings or doing just the theatre or doing the film, which this is, the association is quite exceptional because at the time when we came up with the idea, a lot of us were mainly theatre actors and then within the two years of getting it up and running, um, we sort of shifted into film. So that's why the association, for those who know, we did do a theatre version of it and then the film straight after. So Yeah, that's incredible. I was going to ask about that actually because you had initially started with the theatre pro project and then hired a house for four weeks but two of the weeks were spent doing the theatre project and raising funds for the feature of Robert. Yeah. Does for someone the short feature. Lee? Lee, you know more. Lee, the director. <laughs> Yeah, so I came on board, Jen um, asked me to direct, even though I'd never directed before. <laughs> um, and then she said, uh, so we've got this project happening, um, we don't know if it's going to be a film or a theatre piece. I was like, yep, cool. And then it was like, okay, we're going to do both. I'm like, okay, all right. Um, so, <laughs> so that's what we did. We hired a house in Yarragul for a month and for the first two weeks we did 10 immersive theatre shows. So everything you saw in the film tonight, the audience members participated in exactly that. They came around the back, they were a part of an, um, scones, they had scones, there was lots of scones. Um, Lee actually baked scones every yeah. show and yeah. every day for the films that were fresh for us to eat, so thank you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they came around the back and they were part of the association. So um, with the, with the theatre piece, Joanne <laughs> was the only one that was the outcast all the audience members were part of it they were made welcome at the start and they were made very well known that they were part of the association it was just poor poor joanne that wasn't um so yes everything you saw in the film uh, was part of the theater show um and so that slightly overlapped we had two days within the first week of the theater shows that we started filming so it was a pretty massive month <laughs> um yeah um in fact this day Last year, we were on day two of shooting. Oh. We come off six shows 
of the immersive theatre and straight into yeah two two night shoots of filming where we had beautiful Connie who plays Phyllis sitting over there with gorgeous little Adelaide who's asleep there. Um, Adelaide was also on set. Um, we had our baby Wrangler on set, my fabulous fiance Ryan Buckle, sitting there, who pushed Adelaide around the block in the pram while we were filming. But that's girls that good, right? You get shit done, and that's oh, dad, I swore, sorry. Um, and that's that's what Sweet jazz. Yeah, sorry about that. So yeah. I think as well the um, theatre show helped fund the filming as well, um, all these women, we actually, that's something that we do sometimes, um, we can, there is money to share and profit, but in this one we all said that we really wanted to make a film so we would put our earnings back into the shooting of it, so all the profits from the theatre tickets helped fund the filming. Yeah, that's incredible. And how did you cast it, I guess? You know, the actresses here today. Um, Ke Ke Kelly? Yes, Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> you did an amazing job. You all did an amazing job. <laughs> Beautiful, vulnerable Joanne. Um, Constance, Lisa and Shannon, I guess, uh, what was so fulfilling about um, the, the process being a part of the theatre? Um, show for two weeks and then filming all that in two weeks that must have been a huge feat for you um i think probably the best part of this whole process was actually for those of you in the audience who are actors or in the um industry it's actually quite rare to get rehearsal period time before a film um because we were doing the theater production and most of the actors crossed over in both uh, genres um we actually got to rehearse for a whole few weeks beforehand so by the time we sort of had the film set, we were already just about to step in it and do it, basically, which was awesome. Speak for yourself, Kelly. Sorry. <laughs> I said most. Well, I said most. Maybe explain that. Sounds like a bit of a Mike Lee's. You do. Yeah. So not every like so Shannon and Constance for commitments they couldn't com well they couldn't do the theatre show so we had other two other gag members doing their theatre roles so then Constance and mm -hmm. um, uh, Shannon brought their own sort of take to to the filming yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. it was um, and obviously with the we obviously had the two different scripts um, but for from my perspective it was just awesome because basically we already had those we made the relationships we had the characters we were just able to step on board and it was just a very comfortable awesome place on set really that's what happens on non female set folks there was a couple, couple of roles as well minor roles <laughs> <laughs> i think um what was so rewarding for me was that like it feels good to be working with women in an industry who are amazing and creating together and we did a fundraising process beforehand to fund the theatre show and then we used the fund from the theatre show to fund the film <laughs> a lot of funding um a lot of investment and i think when you're you're so in it and we had the full month in the house and we were it was like we became family basically and i think it really solidified sort of gags, I don't know, you know, us as an ensemble, I think it was a really big step for us to take things to the next level and everyone gave like 110% and that that feels really good, I don't know, as an actor, just to be 100% invested in what you're doing. You don't often get that opportunity. And on top of that, we weren't just the actors, we did everything. So from my perspective, I wasn't part of the theatre show, but I designed the set um, and the costumes for the theatre show and the film version. Um, so I was just as invested. So when I stepped on set for the filming, it was so exciting for me because I actually came as an audience member and watched you girls in the show. And it was really fun to see someone do my role in a different way and be in the Mercy Theatre and see all of my things. And then it was so exciting again to step on, in, on, on onto the set <laughs> and, um, and then be part of the thing that we all created together. You know, it, it wasn't just, we were actors on a set. It was, we were... More than that. We were working hard <laughs> the whole time and having fun. It was awesome. And can you tell us a little bit about how the idea came about? It's very unique and quite hilarious and quite dark, as, as um, the synopsis suggests. Um, I would love to say where it really, really, really first came from, Constance. 
<laughs> okay. I um, Constance rang me one day when she was pregnant and needed some help and we ended up at the doctor's and she was laying on a table and all hooked up to machines. And I just was look staring and she's like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm just gonna take a quick photo. <laughs> she's like, you take. And I was like, oh, I just, just thinking about it. And then um, like, yeah, a couple of days later, I was like, I rang Perry and we got it, got it. We've got the idea and we sort of started, Perry and I started doing some research um, about Stepford Wives and Frankenstein and, I went to some CWA meetings, um, and uh, and then we just sort of developed this idea, um, and uh, that that's really where it first came from, which is great. Um, but I think yeah, Perry and I we just sort of got this concept going, and then we had a story team, which Lee and Shannon Perry and myself were on, and we would have meetings and um, come up with characters and ideas, and sort of had an idea of who, how many people we'd want and who would be in that role, and then yeah, Perry would go away, script it give it back, we'd give notes, give it back, give it back, give it back a little bit. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the story. But it was about, yeah, sort of seeing seeing the women being in charge of taking their own destiny. And, but also like, perfection isn't something that is actually probably good in the end. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's kind of like, maybe some, like, I mean, in Stepford Wives, the story, it's like the men doing it, it's like, well, we can do it too. And it doesn't mean it's good though. <laughs> like, I think you're watching and you go, oh, I think that's a bit wrong, ladies. Well, why not have a go? Do you know what I mean? So that's kind of, it's allowed to be wrong town. A bit wrong town is the kind of, I think, is what I think it is anyway. <laughs> yes, the joy of film and yeah. filmmaking. Um, I would love to hand it over to the audience. If there is anyone, um, hands up please, if you'd like to ask any of our panel um, questions. <laughs> How long have you been driving your partners? <laughs> <laughs> that, is, uh, that is a husband of Dellinger right there. Um, you would... I'll make you a cup of tea later, darling. <laughs> No people were harmed in the making of this film. Yeah. That's just... I'm good. I don't need my... Oh, okay. um, just a, it's interesting telling the same story in two genres, especially back to back. You talked about how it's important that the house smells of songs and there was a sense of belonging to the audience and that sort of stuff, which you'd obviously do better having them there in the room. Was there anything in making it a film version that you went, ah, Um, yes, good question, Sam. <laughs> yeah, there was, actually, watching it back now, I think some of the intimate relationships with the females are better on film. Um, I still love the relationship between Audrey and Phyllis in the film, which some people missed in, in the theatre show. There were, all, there were a couple of um, times in the theatre show where the audience would split, and we did that intentionally, so that depending which side of the audience you're on, you've got a different part of the story. Um, so I think it's probably the intimacy between the women. Um, I don't know, it's just yeah. me as the actor. But I feel like the film really brought out um, the sort of perhaps the backstories of the characters and like Betty's relationship with like, Patient X and Zero. I, zero. zero. Oops. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I, we, we did that through the whole thing, calling the wrong guy. I was going in page next pages, and then I went, oh, I'll read the script yet. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that there were some bits that were a little bit extended from the sh theatre show because the audience would leave and the theatre show the, met the husband knocking on the door would be like, oh, quick, you've got to go. And they wouldn't really know what was happening, but then it was sort of nice in the film to sort of finish that off. I think so. It well, in the theatre show, that ending, none of that. Yeah, you didn't see any of that ending. You literally, it had when the guy was like banging on the door, like ah, enjoying leaving, and you saw me do that. But that's it. And then they were just sort of stranded on the street. <laughs> and, said, yeah, and, also, and also, your um, relationship with your husband, all that that sort of backstory. Yeah. So that sort of all came out. The relationships. Yeah. <laughs> There's another hand. Uh, what's next for the gag? <laughs> what's ah, next for the gag? Well, actually, uh, where's Laura? Is Laura here? Laura, is, uh, Jane Turner from F Word Films. We've actually, yes, give her a big clap because she's an amazing filmmaker as well. And uh, 
Laura and I, we're currently in post-production for our next web series called Last Breath, which is based on a series of monologues um, that we did a writing workshop with Perry Cummings about women... <laughs> Sounds really dark when I say it. I'll get you the smile. Um, it's a, oh, you explain it. You explain it. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. So it's based on uh, real women that were hanged for murder in Australia. Um, so basically, our writing sessions with Perry, where we basically all researched uh, our sort of favourite. <laughs> the one that resonated with us <laughs> yes. in some way. Well, that's still weird. Um, <laughs> anyway, so then we ended up going through a whole process with Perry, writing our own monologues, and then we, it was sort of as if it was our last chance to say something just before we're hanged. So, yeah, <laughs> it's very, it's very light and fluffy. No, uh, it's actually, it was a super cool experience, but yeah, the web series is yeah. due in Late September, September. September October. And Laura is but helping. Laura is helping Jen needs a microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Laura and I are post production for that at the moment. Um, we actually had an editing session the other day. The trailer is probably coming out in about a week, so <laughs> we're already ready for the. So next follow days. us on YouTube and yeah. Facebook and Instagram. Instagram, and then you'll know. <laughs> and um, we have a, a theatre show in at the Butterfly Club in December called Christmas Tale, which um, we did about five years ago. Um, which is um, a verbatim theatre where we went and interviewed a bunch of women about what they thought about Christmas. Uh, some funny things, there's some things happening around Christmas. Um, you know, and because we have uh, three of our gag members now are mothers um, since we did that, so we got them to write a new scene about being a mum at Christmas as well. It's kind of important to all of us, I think, to make sure that just because you become a mother doesn't mean that you get to give up your career. I think that's really important. Um, any advice, I guess, on our... Uh, does anyone, last questions? One in the middle, go. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was just wondering, uh, because you've been running for a few years now, and, um, you know, you're changing as people and becoming mothers and things, and also the whole, like, women's movement is changing, and there's, like, more of a focus on different aspects of womanhood and stuff. Are you finding your focus as a group is changing? Do you have a particular viewpoint that you're trying to get across? Is each, like, are you finding that each project is different or are you trying to funnel yourself towards a certain vision? I think, yeah, it's a, it's a very changing world at the moment and uh, that's great and we all have different opinions and I think that's one thing that I wanted to make very clear in this film is that you can't blanket one gender with one opinion um, and definitely between all the characters in the film from Betty who absolutely adored her late husband to Sylvie who can't stand hers and even though he's been scraped up off the ground you know what I mean like everyone has a different opinion and Joanne, there is a line now that even resonates with me more now. Joanne says in that film, um, oh my God, no, <laughs> no, no, no um, I can't believe you're doing this to another human being. And it's got to be that. It's got to be human being. I know it's a gender thing and it has been, but it's got to move on in that. It's got to be more about humans doing things to humans. It's, it's just got to be nice. Like you've got to look after each other. Yeah. 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 Too. We're not like crusaders and man haters. We're just super excited that we get to hang out together and do things together. And of course, all of our things are women inspired because we're women and we can't dress up as men and pretend, you know what I mean? So we, we could, but our, our projects are just things that we're passionate about. Um, and Perry has a dark sense of. Everything. So Perry, 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 oh, sorry, Perry played Nancy in the film. Just for those of you who don't know, as well as writing it. Yeah. yeah so horror, horror movie fans equals women doing creepy things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we like have a vision per se. I think it's just that we really want to be, we want to be acting, we want to be performing, and instead of waiting for our agent to call with, you know, that audition, we're going well. Stuff it, we're just going to go and make it. Yeah, so yeah. that's just what's happening. stories that are coming up in our minds that we go, cool, let's have a go at that, let's have a go at that. I mean, the Christmas tale is completely different <laughs> to this. It's like, da 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 dance routines. So, but I mean, we just want to get out there and have a go, and that's just, this is just what sort of happened. 
So yeah, that's, oh, and just one last thing, I, I think, and it's sort of in our in our charter, like in the in the film we have a charter, but we sort of have a charter of girls at good and giving voices to people who might not have a voice. Um, and that telling, doesn't necessarily mean mean women. No, either. I think that's really important. And yeah, the same with ladies. It's all human. Absolutely, and so trying to give that and, and explore some stories that maybe haven't had the limelight. Um, and I feel like there's a bit of a thing with taking things that exist and then transforming it into something new, which I think is a bit of a theme for Girls That Good. That and is that, well. um, is that something that you're hoping to do with this film? Is there um, opportunity, I guess, for a longer length feature in regards to the story, to flesh it out a little and, and to really delve into the characters' lives and the backstories in, in that way? Yeah, well, we're hoping that um, because this sold out really well um, at our premiere. So thank you everybody for coming. Like, um, hopefully um, we'll get a few more screenings um, and we're very excited to be working with Stella Rose uh, Productions who are coming on board to, yes, woo, give a big cheer. Um, so that we can hopefully apply for funding and have a feature and perhaps make it into um, a, a feature film. So go back into development, but we're hoping to get a bit more screen time, you know, over the next few months until the end of the year maybe and then, uh, yeah, then we'll take it back into hiding probably and see if we can get some bites from the industry. Yeah. Yes. 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 Well, it is, uh, how are we doing for time? We're good. We're good. We can maybe take one more question from the audience if there is one. Otherwise, we're going to be in the bar yes. straight Otherwise, afterwards. Yes. <laughs> you can have a drink, have a chat with us. We're more than happy to do that. to head to the bar now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, I mean, it, it really is. Um, fascinating to hear about your process. I think that, you know, the whole idea of getting a house for a month and funding the feature film from a theatre project is absolutely hands down. I mean, it's it's fantastic. I, I've never actually heard about anyone doing that before, so. <laughs> I mean, yeah, chicks get shit done, right? <laughs> it's funny, I actually drove past the house today and it's up for auction. <laughs> There's an auction for it on Sunday, and I was like, oh, if only I had the money, let's buy it. That's coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. It's been uh, my absolute pleasure to host the evening tonight and um, be, you know, in such great company. Oh. oh, yes. And, of course, to thank the Lido for screening um, multiple screenings of <laughs> this incredible film, The Association. Well, it is a big, it is a big <laughs> ask, you know, to have a, a short indie film um, and have a commercial theatre cinema um, wanting to be like, yeah, of course, we'd love to support you. So, yes, can we give Lido a big clap? <laughs> 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 Projects like this and many of them, and they have Monster Fest coming up soon. <laughs> we had that. I filmed Screen Bear last year. <laughs> um, so, well, again soon. Um, but yes, with that hiccup, to the bar it is! <laughs> Can we, I just want to thank everybody who actually has come out tonight and also those who have actually come to the immersive show and to this as well. So thank you so much because without you guys we wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you.